Hey everybody, my name is Trevor Spires with HowToNSX.com and today I got a quick one for you, but a cool one, a brand new NSXT uh, use case in version 3.0, custom FQDN whitelisting. So uh, let's get into it. Right now we are looking at my lab, my NSX lab, and I wanna just quickly walk you through um, how to configure FQD and whitelisting and also give you a quick demo of how it works and, and how effective it is. I, I actually uh, think this is a pretty darn good um, you know, domain or, or um, even, even like web filtering sort of technology. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean. Now, uh, before I get into the configuration, I want to show you, uh, just to let you know, NSX um, Firewall has a lot of different places you can place your policies and rules. Um, do not follow my <laughs> guidance here. I've put my FQD and whitelisting policy in um, the emergency rules section. Really, it's probably better to be put in uh, the environment or infrastructure rules section. But um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to take note of that. Do not do not follow this um, as a best practice. It is not the right place to put this rule. Fair enough. Um, that being said, how do you configure FQD and whitelisting? Um, really briefly, um, here's how you do it. There's one prerequisite. Um, that you must have in place. And it's, it's the prerequisite is just a firewall rule config. Um, in order to get this fe feature working, you need to have a rule um, for the DNS protocol that basically does this. Um, we need to have a rule where the source and destination can be whatever you need for your FQD and whitelisting um, use case or your DNS firewall, firewall rule. Um, but the important thing is um, you, we need to specify the DNS ports, obviously. So port 53, I've done UDP and TCP. Um, but the really important thing you need is you need a rule that has a layer seven context profile for DNS enabled. Um, the reason you need that is because the way the DNS whitelisting works in NSX is um, NSX will actually pass uh, your DNS requests into a, a deep packet inspection engine um, really briefly, just to kind of strip off the um, IP to um, FQDN mapping. Uh, so if I type in, you know, www.vmware.com, um, it's going to go through here and NSX is going to do uh, that identification of, hey, vmware.com equals, you know, this IP. Um, that way you can add or remove that IP from your um, kind of under the hood from the firewall rule dynamically. Okay. So. This is the one prerequisite. Past that, it's actually just configuring your rule. So um, I have this uh, configured kind of globally. I, I also will generally, especially right now, there's a lot of cyber attacks happening over um, DNS. So it might be a good idea if you're an SX user to go ahead and write a, a high level policy like this, where, hey, I'm only gonna allow my stuff to hit internal DNS um, because most of the, a lot of those attacks anyway, right now are happening on public, um, DNS over port 53. So, um, you know, that, that part's up to you. This drop rule is optional, but I think the drop rule is good if you truly do want to force your users to use, um, only authorized internal DNS. Okay. So that's the prerequisite rule, just a DNS rule with a layer seven context profile. So we can get that IP to FQD and mapping. Um, what about the FQD and whitelist? How do we do that? Where do we configure it? Well, it, it, it's really, really simple. Um, all I need to do to enable that FQD and whitelist is configure another firewall rule where um, the source and destination, again, can be whatever you want. For me, I, I like the use case where I'm leveraging the custom FQDNs to either allow or deny web traffic. So basically what this kind of allows you to do is keep a list of authorized URLs that your users or your, your systems in the data center can reach um, in, in one place. And it allows you to apply that either you know broadly to everything or actually what I've done here is, um, I'll, I'll show you the group. What I've done is actually just created a, a whitelist tag. Um, so I have my whitelist group and within that, um, anything that's tagged with FQDN-WL will have this rule applied to it, right? Uh, I, we tend to, um, I tend to recommend tagging just because it's easy to consume and easy to automate, but you don't have to use this method. It's just the method that I chose, okay? You can use any, any grouping method that's available within NSX will work for this. Um, so I have now the, um, 
one of my VMs is tagged and I, and I have a little console open at that VM right now. So we'll get to see um, here in a moment. And actually, while I'm in the shell, I'll go ahead and um, I'm going to try and curl to howtonsx.com. That's my, my website. And what's going to happen is that curl is going to be unsuccessful. So I'm, I'm trying to hit howtonsx.com on port 443. It's going to fail. Okay. Um, why is it failing? Well, I have this rule, right? That says um, if the source is my web VM and the destination is anything <clears throat> and the service is HTTPS or, or 443, then um, I want to um, filter the, like I want to only allow that on these attributes. And I'll show you what these attributes are right now. If I go into this group, which I've named FQD and whitelist, this is my FQD and whitelist, right? So I'll just edit this context. And again, this is a context profile. If, if you don't want to create it through the firewall page, you can create this through the um, inventory tab in NSX underneath context profiles. I'm going to edit it and I'll show you um, right now, I have actually a few FQDNs already whitelisted. So I've got google.com, youtube.com, vmware.com, a few other things. What's not on here is my, my own website, howtonsx.com. So um, I'll go ahead and cancel out this curl. And what I'm going to do is just update this rule with another FQDN. And, and this is what's great, right? The, you know, we build security policies in NSX, not firewall rules, but security policies policies, right? That can be consumed. So this allows me to keep a central list of all of the domains that I would like to allow um, all or some of my VMs to access. Um, and it's really simply simple to manage kind of all in one place. So I'm just going to add my new FQDN, my new domain. So www.time. NSX.com, bada boom, I'm going to save that. And now that's been added to my FQD and whitelist. Okay. And if you're creating this for the first time, um, you would just click add attribute, you would add FQD in. And then from there, you can either put in some of, there's some defaults that VMware includes here. You can see any, any of the defaults are listed as system. So a lot of these are things like office.com. Uh, I think we even will allow you to do like some of the, the ranges that AWS uses for S3 and um, elastic load balancer and stuff like that. So there's a lot of good defaults, but um, the big the big change here and the big uh, difference in 3.1 is that now we can add custom FQDMs um, to allow for that FQD and whitelisting use case. So I'm going to go ahead and add and save out all this stuff now that I've got howtonsx.com added into the rule. I'm going to save that rule. You can see this has gone from four to five because I added that new domain. Apply. And... Once this is done applying, now I should be able to go back to my web VM and I should get a response when I curl howtonsx.com. So let's find out. Now I'm going to go back to my VM. I'm going to run that curl one more time. And I didn't get a response, but <laughs> I didn't, it didn't return anything. But now I, uh, I, it's not timing out. I actually am able to reach it. And I don't know why it's not hitting hitting any response because I, I did not test it out on mine. But to give you an idea um, that, that this is in fact working, I'll show you what I get when I go to Google, um, another one of those uh, FQDNs that I whitelisted, right? I'll actually get a, a full response from, from Google uh, on that curl. So uh, pretty cool, right? So, so what, what, what does this allow us to do? Again, this allows security admins um, to define policy um, but not just on paper, right? In, in a working catalog of FQDNs that you want to permit or deny your users to access. So um, pretty cool um, advancement here in NSX. It, it opens up you know, a, a number of new use cases um, that this can be applied to. For me, um, I, I'm applying this to um, a, basically a, a, a web filter, like a white list of, of HTTPS traffic. But um, you could actually apply uh, this context profile to, um, you know, any other protocol that you wanted to. Again, web is probably going to be one of the more common ones, but um, if, if there is another protocol that um, is communicating via DNS, you could absolutely um, apply this same technique to that as well. So that is really all I wanted to show you. I, I hope that this was useful. 
so that is really all I wanted to show you. I hope this was useful. Um, you know, I hope it was useful. In, in, so th that is really all I wanted to show you. I hope it was useful. Uh, I, maybe it's something that you'll use, maybe not. Uh, if you have any questions about it, let me know. It, it's actually pretty simple to get working, but um, you know, certainly you can reach out. And if you have any other questions about um, NSX 3.0, some of the new use cases we can accomplish, NSX in general, or VMware in general, um, as always, you can contact me directly on LinkedIn or via my website, howtonsx.com. Okay. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate your continued